This week in IT, I'm going to look at the three main new features in the upcoming Moment release for Windows 11, which is now available for Windows Update Seekers and will be more generally available on Patch Tuesday next month. We're also going to have a look at a potentially leaked design for a new desktop UI that could be coming to Windows 12. And I'll be talking a little bit about the Windows 10 22H2 update that is also now generally available and starting to roll out. So let's first talk about the first Moment update that Microsoft has just released for Windows 11. Now, if you're not familiar with Moments, these are updates that are coming between feature updates. So for instance, next fall, we'll be getting the 23 H2 update, assumably it'll probably be called. But in between, we'll be getting probably two or three moments. And the first moment has been released. Now, these are features that don't quite make it into the big yearly release, and they're being updated gradually during the year. Now, of course, if you're a business or corporation, you don't have to allow these updates. They can be blocked. If you're a consumer, they will be pushed out to you automatically. So the first big feature that's coming in this first moment is tabs in File Explorer. But it's not just tabs because File Explorer just looks a little bit different from the version that we're all used to seeing. So before we get into tabs, let's have a look at what else is new. Now really this is a change to the what is now called the home experience. Now before you had the quick access items, so folders that you basically pin for quick access on the left under home in File Explorer. But that's all moved over now to the right hand side of the screen. So in the top part, if you click on home on the left, on the top part in the right, you'll see now your quick access folders. And below that, you now have favorites. And this is where you can basically pin files. So it's a little bit confusing. You've got quick access for folders at the top. Then below that, you've got the favorite section, which is just for files. Now, I don't know, does this new layout make any sense or not? Maybe you've got the folders and then the files. So maybe they're all in one place. So maybe it's a bit more logical. But anyway, I'll have to see how this goes and whether it really makes sense in the long term. But you know, I don't know, it's a minor change and I don't think this is going to bother too many people. I still do think it's a little bit confusing though to have to understand here you pin your files, here you pin your folders in two different places. Why could it not just be one unified place where you pin everything? I don't know. Maybe that will change in the future. But of course the big new thing here in File Explorer is tabs. Now, a lot of people download kind of third party file explorer alternatives that allows you to basically split the file explorer screen into two halves so that you can drag and drop from different locations more easily. Now, of course, you can kind of do that anyway by just opening two file explorer windows and putting them left and right on the screen. But, you know, that's a bit of a faff and you've got to set that up yourself. Now, File Explorer tabs, I've struggled a little bit, to be honest, to understand how this is really useful. So maybe Microsoft is doing this because it's a feature in macOS. I don't know any macOS users out there. Please let me know in the comments below. Maybe this is something, you know, Microsoft just wants to put into Windows for feature parity with macOS. Not quite sure. Maybe this is something that they're doing because it's easy to do from technology they developed in the past, but never actually put into Windows. I think they were called sets, where basically in any application you could open different tabs in order to organize your work. Now these tabs in File Explorer don't work in quite the same way as Edge tabs. You can reorder them so you can kind of move them around, but you can't drag them out of File Explorer to open a new window. And I think maybe that's a little bit of a shame that the tabs don't work in exactly the same way that many people will be used to. But nevertheless, again, the proof is always in the pudding with this kind of thing. I have to really see, is it going to make a difference to my workflow or not? And I've only just installed this on one of my devices. Now this moment's update isn't a full, you know, reinstall of the operating system. It's just an, an enablement package basically. So it's pretty quick to install and all of these features should suddenly be enabled. So is it revolutionary? Well, of course not, but I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this and now you have it.
Another feature that's in this moment is suggested actions. Now, unfortunately, this is only available to people who have their device set to US and English. So unfortunately, my device, I think, is set to the Czech Republic. It's not US, so I don't see this. But what this allows you to do is when you select a date or a time, Windows will basically present a little pop-up that will present you with a couple of different actions depending on what you've selected. So for instance, if it's a date, it might offer to, you know, create a calendar invite. Uh, if it's a phone number, it might offer you to make a call using the phone link app or Teams. So I think this is quite useful. Uh, again, proof is always in the pudding until I actually get my hands on this feature and it's more widely available around the world in different regions and it'll be a little bit difficult to say. But we'll see, looks like a nice touch. Last but not least for this moment, you're getting taskbar overflow. So basically what this means is if you've got a lot of icons maybe pinned to the taskbar or you have a lot of applications open at the same time, but you've got limited screen real estate, maybe you're working on a small notebook screen for instance. Now when a lot of applications open, instead of them just disappearing from the taskbar, which is basically what happened in the original release of Windows 11, you get an overflow section. So basically you can just click there and you can see all of these icons for the applications that would otherwise have disappeared. So I think this is an important usability improvement and probably should have been there in the original release, of course. So let's move on to this potentially new desktop UI for Windows 12, or maybe we'll even see this in a future update for Windows 11, who knows. So it was Microsoft Ignite last week and some eagle-eyed users, I don't know where this came from originally, I think maybe from Zach Bowden over at Windows Central, somebody had noticed that during one of the presentations there was a different desktop UI for you know what kind of appeared initially to be Windows 11. So probably somebody in Microsoft just actually accidentally use this screenshot during a presentation. So what you see here is basically the system tray, search and the widgets bar moved up to the top of the screen and just your application icons left on what is now a floating taskbar. Now of course this is all a little bit more Mac OS but I think it makes a lot of sense because the taskbar is a little bit imbalanced down at the bottom. You have the icons in the middle then two things at either side and they kind of bolted on the widgets at the end to try and balance it out. But I think it doesn't make sense to maybe move these things. I'm a little bit unclear about how the system tray would work there at the top because you don't see any other icons. There's no overflow for the icons there. You just see a few. How you would access the rest, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure about having search there always at the top and how that all looks when you've got a fully maximized window. I'm not quite sure. So obviously there are lots of unanswered questions about how this would actually work in practice, if it's even a real thing, of course. And another question that I have about this is, well, okay, the floating taskbar looks nice, and maybe this is just for touch devices, of course, but you are wasting a little bit of screen estate down at the bottom there. You know, I'd rather be able to use all of my desktop. So I'm a bit concerned about what's going on with that floating taskbar, how this looks when you've got Windows full screen, what happens to all that stuff at the top. Uh, of course, in macOS, it's kind of separated in a menu bar, but here it's not really clear how that's going to work. But anyway, I quite like the way that it looks, and it's definitely an interesting concept. And lastly this week, Windows 10 22H2 is now gradually rolling out to users. Now this is a bit of a mysterious update, and I think again, like the moment for Windows 11, this is just an, an enablement package, so it's not a full operating system reinstall. So of course that's good news. But it's a bit of a mystery as to exactly what we've got coming in this update. There's no official list of new features. So Microsoft is just basically saying that, you know, this just widens the scope of available features and you know, just a few tweaks basically in here, but exactly what we're not really sure. So it would be nice, I think, if Microsoft published a list, especially for IT pros, so they can evaluate, is this something that they need to roll out right now? Maybe it brings some things that are gonna solve some challenges for them. So it would be nice to have an up-to-date list of what exactly is contained in this update. Why Microsoft isn't communicating more accurately what we're gonna see here? Not not really sure. Maybe they will over the next few weeks as this thing starts to roll out more broadly. 
So that's it. So it's quite a lot of Windows news this week. Obviously, some of it coming from Ignite, some of it happening this week. That moment for Windows 11 literally just dropped yesterday. As I said, it's going to be more widely available in November as part of Patch Tuesday. So I think that'll be around November the 8th, probably. But if you want to, you can obviously uh, go and install it right now. Uh, just open up Windows Update and you should probably see it already sitting there. But it is only available if you're already on 22H2. That's it from me this week. I'm going to leave you with another video that you might find interesting. If you found this content useful, then please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But that's it from me today, and I'll see you next time.